Okay, here we go. Uh, so short uh, lesson based off a little bit what we did yesterday and uh, something that you've seen before. Have you seen this equa or this uh, question right here? Uh, write the equation for velocity given position. Who can tell me how I determine velocity? Yeah, so therefore the velocity of time is equal to, and I'm just going to write it. You don't have to write this all the time. I'm just going to write it once. It's equal to the derivative of the position function. And what is the derivative of the position function? 18t minus 3t squared. Excellent. So what we want to do today that's just slightly new is we want to say, uh, not what, but uh, yeah, what is the acceleration at time t? It turns out that the acceleration is equal to the derivative of velocity, which is the second derivative of the position function. So you don't have to write all three of those. You could just write acceleration. But so we're going to we're just going to take the second derivative. What's the second derivative? 18 minus 6t. Are we okay so far? Nothing new, just took a second derivative. So, if you look at this, I'm going to graph the velocity function and I'm going to graph the acceleration function. What shape does the velocity function make? Parabola, Parabola right side up or upside down? Uh, upside down due to the negative 3 in front of the t squared. If I factor out a positive 3t, notice what do I get? What's left over? 6 minus t. So therefore, it crosses the x-axis at what times? 6 and 0. So you told me that it goes through, um, or it's upside down, it goes through 0 and 6. You have double prime. This is the velocity. We all okay? All right, second part is then I want to graph the acceleration function. So I'm going to graph the acceleration function. What shape does that make? Line. Is the slope positive or negative? It's negative. So it's, it's going to be headed down. It crosses through somewhere up here like 18. But then where does it cross the x-axis? At a value of 3, uh, Kaylee sees this. If she just sets this equal to 0, then she would solve and she would get 3. So 18 minus 6t is equal to 0. She has 18 is equal to 6t. So at time is equal to 3 is where it crosses. So you've seen this before. You're going to see it once more in second semester. And this will be the most common question that ever gets asked for an FRQ for the AP exam. And so... Uh, no, but um, you would definitely struggle. Yep. So we, we are going to piece these together. When is the velocity positive and when is the acceleration positive? Try that on your own. Talk to your peers. Take 30 seconds. When is the velocity positive? When is the acceleration positive? Talk. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Who's super confident about C? When is the uh, velocity positive? Zero to six because that's when the velocity function is sitting above the x-axis. Yep. Now, tell me, uh, is the velocity increasing or decreasing at this spot? Is the velocity going up or is it going down? It's going up. Is it going up or going down? It's going down. So here the velocity is increasing. Here the velocity is decreasing. As I talk about that, I'm actually talking about the second derivative. Notice, when is the acceleration positive? From 0 to 3. It's so important that you make this connection. Watch, I'm going to draw this part in blue right here. Okay, This is where the acceleration is positive. That matches with this part of the graph where it's on its way up. 
right? And then we say that the acceleration is negative here. That's when it's on its way down. See how three is right there? Three would be in the middle right there. Are you, are you making that connection? Now, you don't have to make that. I just want you to see the problem in a broader sense. So good. You're almost done. This is the big part for the day. When is the particle speeding up and when is it slowing down? Here's what makes it uh, a little bit different is that velocity has both positive and negative values. Positive when it's moving to the right, negative when it's moving to the left. Okay? I'm going to show you velocity positive and acceleration positive. Okay? So I'm going to do my best. Okay? You tell me if I'm speeding up or slowing down. Are you ready? <laughs> you got nervous, didn't you? He's like, he's going to hit. Yeah. One time I tried to do a, a clap push up and I did it. And then I tried to do a double clap and I did it. And then, then I tried to do a triple clap and I hit my face on the ground. Yeah. Okay, I was speeding up, right? So what did we learn? We said, well, when velocity and acceleration, when it's positive and positive, we're speeding up. Okay, now I'm going to show you velocity positive, which means I'm headed in that direction, but I'm going to show acceleration negative. So I'm going to decelerate. Here's what that looks like. You ready? Am I speeding up or slowing down in that situation? Slowing down. So, so when we had velocity was positive, but acceleration was negative, we were slowing down. Let's look at what it looks like if the velocity is negative and the acceleration is negative. Okay, you tell me if I'm speeding up or slowing down in this situation, okay? <laughs> speeding up, right? I'm just going in the opposite direction, right? So in this situation, when the velocity was negative and the acceleration was negative, I was speeding up. Now I'm going to show you velocity negative, but acceleration positive. Here's velocity negative. This is my favorite one. Velocity negative, acceleration positive. Ready? Velocity negative, so I'm headed that way, acceleration positive. <laughs> was I speeding up or slowing down? I was slowing down, but eventually I then turned to speeding up, right? But not until the velocity started to then get in the positive direction. So if you notice, how, what determines if I'm speeding up or slowing down? If the signs are the same, then I'm speeding up. It's kind of like forces that are acting together. If velocity is positive and acceleration is positive, it makes us go faster. If velocity is negative and acceleration is negative, it makes us go faster. But if they're opposing forces, we're slowing down. So the question is, when is the particle speeding up? That's going to be when the velocity and the acceleration have the same sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these spots here. I'm going to plot a few spots. I'm going to put acceleration, or I'm sorry, velocity, and I'm going to put acceleration here. Okay? And I mark the value 0. I mark the value 3. I mark the value 6. Because those are the important points that I have on my graphs. Is the velocity positive or negative from 0 to 3? Positive. Is the velocity positive or negative from 3 to 6? Positive. 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 Remember, you guys, you told me velocity is positive from 0 to 6. That's where it's above, right? Is the velocity positive or negative after 6? Negative. It's negative. So I've got my velocity markings. Now we'll do acceleration. Is acceleration positive or negative from 0 to 3? It's positive. How about from 3 to 6? How about from 6 to infinity? So we can see now where the signs are the same and where they're different, right? So when is the particle speeding up? When the signs are the same. So from 0 to 3 and 6 to infinity. When is the particle slowing down? Yep, 3 to 6. See how I came up with that? That's the new piece for today. And then I just want to bring it back with this last one. What is the distance the particle has traveled? We need to determine these things. We need to determine the time and the position. And from the last test, what are the, what are the spots that we identify here? Where it starts, change, and ends. At what time do we start? 
zero. At what time do we change direction? We change direction at six. You change direction when velocity changes from positive to negative or from negative to positive. Velocity is what determines direction force. So at six is where we change from positive to negative. Everybody see that? So I'm going to write down six here is when I change. And when do I end? Eight. So I now need to figure out my positions. What do I do to figure out my positions? I plug them in. If we, Where do we plug it into? The velocity, the acceleration, or the position? When you plug in zero, what do you get? Zero. Okay. Can I have uh, half? You guys just divide in half. Half of you guys figure it out at six. The other half of you guys figure it out at eight. Take out your calculator, type it in, see if you get the same thing. Go. Yeah. No. We're in a cul-de-sac. So. Yes, if you go to my house and you wear a costume and you say trick-or-treat, I will happily give you candy. But sometimes some of the high school kids, they don't wear a costume and they don't say trick-or-treat. And I say, get lost. Yep. Okay, apples from the apple tree back there. I like it. All right, what'd you get for six? 108? Can somebody confirm 108? Yeah. So what'd you get for eight? 64? Can somebody confirm, six, confirm 64? Yeah. Okay, so what I do then is I go all the way out to 108 and I go back to 64. So if I want to figure out the entire distance traveled, it looks like that, doesn't it? So I would have 108 plus whatever 108 minus 64 is, right? Mm -hmm. Or 108 plus, let's see, 104, so it would be 44. Uh, so I've got, what, uh, 152. And that's that. Now I used to divide this up into two parts. I had this one, but then I also had calculator one. We don't need to do that. And instead of getting four problems on the assignment, you just have two. Okay, so that's the only thing that we're extending off from there. But it would be good for us to, at this time, take out and work on whatever you want to work on, and you can have the rest of the time to work. You got about uh, about 18 minutes. I'll come around and answer what questions you have. If people have questions on the graph problems from yesterday, not surprised. We could talk about those.